So, so yeah. So with that, let me um do what's been fun for me, uh, problem solving, ChatGPT for all, and uh, let me repeat what I was saying earlier uh, for the purpose of the recording that will go on YouTube, which is um, really. I, I think this is one of the ways in which generative AI can actually be helpful. Not you know, I, I when people use uh, generative AI like uh, solution key, that doesn't help you. It really doesn't. I mean, it, regardless of what I do in this class, it wouldn't have helped you in the long term in your academic and professional career because at some point you have to perform. At some point you are a uh, you are an engineer at a company and you need to know how to do your job. <laughs> and, um, so uh, so regardless of what I do here as an instructor, uh, if you are not doing things where you are actually learning the material, it, it's going to hurt you in the long term. That That's a thing that I don't have control over, whether you are hurt or not. And in order so that you are guided through the path that will cause you less pain in the long term, uh, I've been doing the required one-on-one -on -one meeting for this class. And I think what I'm going to kind of modify how I communicate in the future is to kind of make it clear that the written work that you do for this class, they don't matter in the sense of like what you turn in, it doesn't actually affect your grade. Really, um, the way in which written work matters is that it's an, um, a setting in which you can practice your physics learning. And uh, when we do the required one-on-one -on -one meeting, I do try to ask you only the questions you have seen as exhibited in your written work. So as you are going through the, your written work, if um, uh, you are doing things that bypasses learning, doesn't help you. And I'm hoping what I'm demonstrating with the ChatGPT here is one of the ways in which you can actually learn, not, you know, not bypass your learning, actually, um, you know, interact with the material in a way that hopefully help you um, kind of, in a way where the material sticks with you better. Because uh, I, I do get it simply watching the, um, watching the lecture videos, uh, I know, uh, a lot of people don't even watch the lecture videos. That's fine. I know that happens. And in the end, what matters is, have you learned the material? And is, if uh, watching the lecture videos helps you, great, watch it. It's there. If uh, you feel you don't learn from watching the lecture videos, okay, don't watch it. Find some other way that works for you. And for some people, that other way might be uh, working through these homework questions and um, having someone to interact with. I mean, you could come to my office hour, by the way, in, happening in an hour. But, you know, as, uh, there are also many people who don't come into office hours. Then I think uh, generative AI can be helpful as, uh, as basically a virtual tutor. Because uh, it, um, it, you know, it's like a work. Imagine, so I used to work for a company called Tutor.com. Uh, back when I was a uh, grad student, I was uh, trying to save up some money for a trip that was coming up. Um, and when I was working for Tutor.com, it was an online company way back in, wow, 2010, 2012. Anyways, <laughs> the people I was helping, I wasn't sitting with them in person. It was an online company. I was providing help to students um, online. They, they had their own software that's actually quite similar to Zoom. Uh, there was a whiteboard and all that. And um, really the main value I provided there was that when students logged in, I was someone who could uh, uh, answer their question in real time. Uh, uh, so I think they could, uh, I forget if uh, we had an audio function. Uh, they could definitely type and I think we might have an audio function, no video. Um, because I don't remember seeing students' faces, but we might have an audio. But anyways, uh, so th this uh, ChatGPT, uh, you can use it like that virtual tutor, like a tutor who's uh, virtual because it's not a real human being. Um, now, when you're doing that, the uh, thing that you have to be careful is basically sometimes it'll be too eager to help if you are simply um, like, you know, if I do this, even though it has in its memory of me asking it to give me, you know, step-by-step -step solution, if I simply did a copy and paste like this, I'm like 80% sure it'll just give me the answer, probably, I think. It might not give me the numerical value, it's definitely giving me the formulas. And no, 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 it's just giving me the answer. 
Now, it didn't, uh, uh, in the Newton meter. So if you are doing it this way, again, this won't help you. Because I, I think even if you feel like, uh, even if you, you know, read through these uh, descriptions, explanations, and you feel like you understood it when you read it, um, like 7 out of 10, uh, when you come back a day later, you look at it. And if you didn't already know how to do it the first time, and you've simply read it through this, when you try to remember this second time, most times people don't remember. You got to go through a process. And what the process is, it's different for different people. Um, for me, pain helps me learn. <laughs> I, I do this uh, when I try to memorize your names. And like, uh, you know, second, third, the guy guess, guessing your names. And like half the time I'm wrong. And that embarrassment of not knowing your name, that actually helps me remember because th that's how uh, my memory simply works. So um, now when you are trying to learn how to do physics problems, hopefully it's not just a memory, you are not just trying to memorize it, but in trying to reason it through, your having tried it will help you remember, help you understand and remember, and be able to go through the exact same steps or similar set of steps in, in the near future. So for this question, let me not do this, and let me just remind the ChatGPT that I'm trying to learn and not give me answers right away. Um, so, hi, uh, just to, as a reminder, I am really trying to learn this uh, material because I'm going to get quizzed on it by my professor at our in-person one-on-one -on -one meeting so I can ask you then. Um, can you please um, uh, wait for me to tell you what I've done and um, just to help me with the next step, not the entire problem so that I can learn to do the questions myself. Oh, uh, wait, there should be a question mark, because that was a question that started. <laughs> so, and it'll acknowledge. And let me actually test it with uh, this question. Um, yeah, so this one, you have to start by drawing free body diagram, really. That, that's the way to go. Um, so now, if I've done this... Um, so hopefully it won't tell me much. It might tell you where to start. Okay. Um, so let me start with the correct free body diagram. Uh, so uh, where do I want to draw? This image description is kind of in the way. Um, yeah, let me do it this way. I'm going to bring up one note. <laughs> Give it a try. So, uh, so let me um, to try to have a realistic looking work. I'm gonna say uh, so. I'm starting with a, a, a free body diagram. Uh, so let me draw the free body diagram here. So I have um, the boy on the left is bigger, uh, 85 kilograms. So, well, so 85 kilogram times G. And I have a boy on the right um, who will be lighter and has mass of 40 kilogram times G. And I'm going to make a slight bit of a mistake. I'm just going to draw one force that I'm reminded through the question. You know, question is asking, what is the mass of the board? So I'm reminded, oh, yeah, I need a, um, the, the force of, uh, weight of the board. And I'm, maybe I remember as far as um, it has to be, uh, I have to draw it as if it's acting at the center of the mass of the board. And given this, I'm going to assume that center of the mass of the board is somewhere here. 
and I'll say mg. I say this is a uh, wrong or there's a mistake because these forces don't uh, balance to zero. You have a static equilibrium condition where net force has to be zero, so there's a fulcrum force. But you know, this is one of those questions where missing that, you might still be able to get the right answer because um, you don't really use net force equals zero condition, you just use net torque is equal to zero condition. So let me give this a try. Let's say um, I have to I have to draw a free body diagram first. And this is what I have so far so good. And then it might remind me of the net torque. Yeah, principle of torque balance, uh, which is, I guess, uh, fine enough. Uh, so if you forgot, uh, you know, so technically, you this is the static equilibrium condition. Net force is equal to zero and net torque is uh, equal to zero. And what enforces this is the fulcrum force. But you could ignore it um, because if you set this as your center of rotation, then then the fulcrum force provides a zero torque. So if you are just using the net torque equation with these three forces that we've identified so far, the numerical answer you get will still be right. So let me write that out and um, see if... Uh, uh, ChatGPT will guide me. So I'll make this mistake. So in calculating the torque, I'll make the mistake about the direction of torque. So you you have to decide, you know, which direction is going to be positive. Is counterclockwise positive? Then great. Then you make sure that these clockwise forces, you label them as negative. That's what you are supposed to do. But let's say I forgot and I just uh, did a... Uh, um, Torque is equal to R cross F, and I totally blank out on what cross product means. <laughs> and uh, I just do distance times the force. So I do 3.0 meter times 85 kilogram times G plus um, the mg. Uh, wait, the distance first. And I guess I can figure out this distance correctly. One meter times mg plus uh, now the 40 kilogram. Wait, wait, distance first, five meters. So this is a, a work that shows sign error that needs to be corrected before we can uh, proceed. Uh, let's see if. Uh, ChatGPT will correct me on this. So I'm just going to copy and paste this portion of it. Uh, so it doesn't see that I know what I'm doing here. Uh, okay, I think I got the uh, torque due to each of the three objects. Uh, uh, does this look uh, okay to solve for mass, uh, for mass M? And, you know, and it's mistakes like this that I can imagine being frustrating for people because you put in some time and you are, you know, and the system says it's wrong. And this is, um, let me just recap. Now, okay, so it's a recapping, um, but so if you are using ChatGPT like this, you'd have to, you know, make sure you read it through. And follow up on anything that um, that you didn't understand. Now, it's oh, actually, this has a mistake in it. Um, yeah, so um, it mistake in it that um, the force to the the weight of the uh, weight weight of the board it should be have the same sign as the boy on the right, and so these two have opposite sign. Um, uh, so let me ask it this way. Uh, sorry, uh, you have a minus sign where I didn't. Uh, what's that about? Oops. 
Uh, it's changing how it works now. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully reading this will now remind you which should be what. Wait on the board in the. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I guess um, we'll say um, boy on the left, counterclockwise. Okay. Boy on the right, clockwise. Uh, uh, um, I think uh, the board uh, creates a uh, clockwise uh, torque. Uh, then it should uh, look like uh, this, right? It's, uh, and I'll correct it here. Um, with so ChatGPT had a minus sign for that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's actually how. Counterclockwise is very commonly chosen as a positive sign because um, it's a kind of. Um, that's the way the the, the polar polar coordinate systems are set up. So, um, like, even though I, I do think it's a little bit um, counter, I don't know. Sometimes you you know you want clockwise to be positive and counter clockwise to be negative. That's also fine, as long as um, you are consistent. Yeah, so now this would be something that you have to provide. Even though ChatGPT um, had this picture before, uh, I would say it's not super good with the spatial reasoning. So lo even looking at this picture, it might not correctly work out whether the this force provides a clockwise or a counterclockwise torque. So, okay, so we have that and um, let's see, can I do this in my head? Um, so, just uh, writing it out, uh, mass should be, by the way, G's all cancel out, which is nice. Um, so mass, uh, let me just try to do this in my head. Uh, well, I'll do the algebra in my head and the rest I'll just, uh, so three times eight, uh, 85 minus five times 40 divided by one meter. That's going to be the mass. I move the mass over to the left and then divide by one meter on both sides. Um, so that's going to be equal to 255 minus. So 55 kilogram. Um, feels heavy. It's right. All right. So I'll say, all right, I got it. Thank you. All right. I got it. Thank you. So, you know, it, it, uh, um, ChatGPT uh, as a virtual tutor is something that can help you spot your mistakes, like uh, sign errors that were here. Oops. Um, I don't know what's happening. This is an unusual time for me to hold a virtual class session. I usually do it on Friday, and it's possible that on Friday the server is not loaded as much. Um, anyways, uh, let's uh, let's see how much time do we have? About thirty minutes. Let's. Uh, that's probably enough time to do two substantive questions. Let's uh, find the two that are um, substantive. This can be good. Uh, there might be a better question. Oh yeah, there's a gravity question uh, like this. Um, let's imagine that you are looking at this question and you have no idea what to do. Uh, th this is the universal gravitation question and um, either you find the right formula to <laughs> plug the numbers into or you go through the derivation. Um, I think my inclination would be to go through the derivation but let's say we're staring at it. You look at the hint, which says convert unit. All right, I can convert unit. That doesn't really help me. And then let's say, um, 
I'm stop and I'm asking. Um, So, I'm not sure where to start with uh, this uh, question. I wonder if it'll just hand me the formula or walk me through the Newton's law of universal gravitation. Ah, uh, Kepler, yeah. So, all right, it's handing me a formula, which you can. I'm pretty sure this is uh, derived somewhere in the textbook also. So, um, yeah, if you're doing that, I guess that's fine. Um, the main thing I would uh, ask you is, remember, uh, one, uh, you know, try to find the formula in the textbook now that you have some idea of what you're looking for. That's one. Two, uh, once you found it, then, you know, remember where it is. Remember how to find it again. Uh, because um, when we do the one-on-one -on -one meeting, you will be able to use the textbook and you know exactly what it is you are looking for in the textbook, then great. Um, you know, you can find it and start from that. That's fine. I'll take that. It, it's, uh, um, it's not a problem. Um, but uh, if you, you know, don't have that, then, then, um, then uh, so I, I want to know, I, I will, if we are using these uh, formulas that are derived from the textbook, I'll want to see you look it up from the textbook. I'll know, I'll want to know that you know where to find it. Because, uh, you know, in, in real job, it is right that um, a lot of times there are detailed formulas that are derived for you. Maybe it's published in a paper and all you have to do is use it. So the really the skill there is, the most important skill there is not whether you can drive it again, it's whether you can use it. So let's use this. Uh, so let's see, I think I should have those numbers written down. So I have R, this is the orbital radius of Io, 4 to 1, 200 kilometers. And I have the orbital period of Io of 1.782 days. And I'm going to use uh, all from alpha. That way I don't have to convert any units. I can just type in 4 pi squared times radius, 4 to 1, 200 kilometers divided by g. I think all from alpha will understand that's the universal gravitation constant times the period 1.782 days squared. So um, then it says 1.051 times 10 to the 10. What? Uh, no, something's wrong. Oh, yeah, because I didn't cube it. They should be cubed. I checked the unit because uh, you know it should have been unit of kilograms and yeah 10 to the 10 didn't sound big enough 1.865 times 10 to the 27 kilograms okay 1.865 times 10 to the 27 kilograms and I'll say all right got it yeah pretty easy um, <laughs> you know the right formula and uh, you know it this is fine uh, I guess uh, 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 I got it. I guess uh, what I would uh, want you to be able to do is uh, derive this from uh, first the principles, which would be, you know, you um, start by setting up this picture. You have Jupiter and you have Io, which is orbiting. Um, it's a feeling this is centripetal force, which is the force of gravity, and that uh, that's a uh, uh, yeah, so you set up this equation, Newton's law of universal gravitation, g times the mass of Jupiter times mass of Io divided by the distance squared is equal to the centripetal uh, force, mass of the Io times its speed squared divided by r. And starting from this, um, you should be able to um, do some cancellation, so mass of Io doesn't matter, great. And uh, you do need to express V in terms of the distance to pi r per time period um, so that you have expression in terms of period, not velocity. And, um, and suppose you wanted to learn how to do this. Uh, let's see if ChatGPT can help you with that. Uh, so I... Um, I'm worried that I either want 
remember the Kepler's third law formula or that um, I won't be able to use it at the 101 meeting. Um, is there a way to do this problem starting from I'll do it quotation. This is my phrasing, and it's a phrasing that many physicists should use. Starting, starting from first principles. First principles. It might give you this approach, maybe. Derive the formula, yeah, Newton's law of universal gravitation as a centripetal force. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to go deeper and learn how to do questions like that without relying on memorized special case of formulas like this one, then, and then yeah, you can. This uh, you should have it memorized. It's not, it's one of the fundamental laws of nature. You should have it memorized. It's not a special case formula. And this, you know, it comes up often enough in your future classes also that you should have it memorized. Deriving it again from scratch is a pain. So yeah, starting with these, you do that, yeah. And then you go through the derivation. V is that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can read it through this um, and, you know, maybe walk away for a bit and try to reproduce it on your own without asking ChatGPT again. That would be one way to make sure that you uh, really learn how to do problems like this. Uh, so, all right. Thank you. Okay, let's go find another question to do. Um, might have enough time for two more questions. Let's see, do we want to do another gravity question? Uh, these are probably simple enough, so let me not do this. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, these, uh, although, let me see if uh, ChatGPT can teach you about scaling relationship. Um, so let me ask that. Um, so uh, my professor says that I should be able to do this question without writing anything down using scaling relationship. Uh, but he didn't really explain <laughs> what that is. I'm pretty sure I do, but never mind. <laughs> uh, can you teach me? Um, I'm sure I mentioned scaling relationship one of the in one of the lecture videos or homework helpful videos probably. Oh wow, it's doing two things. Uh, let me see. Why is the first one so long? Uh, all right. Oh, I, it's doing first one first and then the second one. Let me just read it through both and then see. Um, scaling relation, another property, especially when we know, yeah, mathematically. So, yeah, you could start out with this, uh, which is basically the front half of the Newton's law of universal gravitation. You know, look at this. It's uh, this uh, part that doesn't get canceled out with the mass of the op test object. Um, so, yeah, so G, it's uh, linearly dependent on mass and inversely squarely <laughs> dependent on the radius. <laughs> so, yeah, increase of mass proportionally, yeah. Quadruple the mass, yeah. Radius is, um, it's in the denominator squared, yeah. So having the radius will increase it by a factor of four, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, and these scaling effects are something that you might be able to do in your head. So what was the question? Um, mass quadruple and radius half, yeah. So both of them provide a factor of a four. So it's four times four, 16. That's the kind of math you can, you could write it down, you should be able to do it in your head too. And yeah, density in effect, yeah. So density is quartered while volume stays the same. Now that part would be harder. Do I say that? Density is quartered and its radius is unchanged. Um, so radius unchanged makes things a little bit easier because your volume stays the same. So density, CD being quartered means uh, your uh, mass decreases by a factor of four. Uh, so is, is that what it talks about? Um, applying to this, 
Uh, yeah, there's this quarter in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> I swear I didn't glance at it. Yeah. The other one, that one's now harder. So you have to first work out, you know, for density to be quartered while mass doesn't change. What does that mean for the radius? There's going to be some fractional power up there. So, um, so yeah, radius must decrease. And there's a, a ooh, that's cut off. Uh, yeah, so it, C didn't quite fully work it out. Uh, let's see what the second response says. Sure. Um, yeah, same deal. The formula, yeah. I think I do like this better over that, just because it's got fractions, not the decimals. This is quarter. Mass density, yeah. Radius unchanged. The volume is constant. Yeah. That's, yeah, that, that's good explanation, I think. Here, change the same. Yeah, yeah, this is the fractional thing because that's a four square rooted uh, raised with, no, sorry, four third rooted. So, yeah, that, yeah. You know, this is better. So, I'll say that. So, so yeah, this is uh, basically the explanation of the scaling relationship and, um, and it didn't quite go into, um, you, you know, using proportionality instead of equality. So you don't even have to write down G. But other than that, it's fine. So I guess it's, uh, so 16 times. So that should be 160. I think uh, it's probably set with a tolerance of 3% so that I can use 10 instead of 9.8 for the... Um, Yeah, so uh, this was mass dense this quarter. Yeah, so that's one fourth, so 2.5. Um, so this is the one where, um, yeah, that I think uh, you need a calculator. So let me do G divided by 2.5. Maybe I can do that in my head. Uh, can I? So that's uh, like uh, being multiplied by 4 and then divided by 10. Is that right? Yeah. Multiply by 4, divide by 10. So like a 4 maybe. And let me just make it 3.9. Because uh, I'm worried about two um, uh, small errors adding up the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, let me see if I do 4. Will it say it's wrong? Oh, maybe I was over worried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, four was close enough. <laughs> so, so yeah, you, you can do everything in your head without writing anything down. Uh, so I'll just say, I got it. Thank you. Uh, I got it. Thank you. I know the numbers aren't exactly right, but the professor mentioned only needing to be within in 3% or 5%. I'll say 3%. 3% of the correct answer so that we could use a G approximately equal to 10 meter per second squared. Hmm. All right, I probably have enough time for maybe one substantive question. Uh, it, so let's look. Yeah, probably enough for gravity question. Let's find the static equilibrium question to do. Um, this could be good. Uh, let's do this one. Because it involves a um, two-dimensional um, kind of arrangement. And ChatGPT might struggle with it. Uh, so, so let's ask it and see how it does. Uh, okay, this is the last uh, question I have. I think uh, I need to start with a free body diagram, right? And it will probably say yes. So, um, 
So let me see if we can help me draw free body diagram. So as we've covered, I know we know it can't actually draw free body diagram. If you ask for the diagram, it'll generate some image that's a garbage. Uh, so in your diagram, you'll want to include. Mm -hmm. So let's see if I made this uh, mistake that could be realistic. So you are used to drawing free body diagram by starting with a simple dot. Now I shouldn't do that because it's uh, we are dealing with the torque. We are we need to deal with the extended body. But let's imagine we are just uh, you know uh, making this mistake, fighting the last battle. And uh, so downward at the center of the strut, and I didn't quite understand what it meant by center of the strut. So I write down 400 newton and weight of the sign acting downward at the end of the strut. Again, I didn't quite understand what I meant by that. And draw this, 165 N. Tension in the cable upward to the left, making an angle of 30 degree with the strut. Okay. Uh, tension T, 30 degrees. Um, hinge force at the wall, both as horizontal and let's just say I really don't understand it, so I do F uh, hinge and F hinge. Um, yeah, I think that is all the right forces and I drew it wrong. Um, and then let me ask how it looks to ChatGPT. Uh, again, I think uh, there's uh, some uh, realistic aspect to this mistake because uh, until you started doing rotation, um, this is how you would have drawn the free body diagram to figure out the net force and you weren't worried about network. How does this look? Hopefully they'll tell me it looks terrible. <laughs> or ChatGPT is really polite. It won't tell you it looks terrible. It'll, you know, find something to <laughs> compliment you on. Looks really well organized. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, it didn't spot that um, it, it didn't spot that um, I didn't correctly locate the forces um, I mean I, I can still keep um, moving on with its uh, advice uh, which now would be okay let's write down the sum of the forces <laughs> So, you know, when I did this, I knew it was a mistake, but, you know, role-playing a student, ChatGPT didn't say anything that would uh, indicate that this is a mistake. So, let's keep going. So, I can write down, so, some of forces in the horizontal and vertical directions. So, I'll say, and, you know, as I'm doing that, I might realize, oh, I need to say this is Y, this is X. Uh, so, that, or, you know, let me leave it the same way and just use the same symbol, which would be a mistake that really should be fixed. Um, so that force in the x direction is going to be um, the tension, uh, the, the hinge force, FH, and I'll say minus um, T times cosine of 30 degrees. And is that angle correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, the, that angle is correct. All right. And that I say that's equal to zero. Oh wait, it didn't say it's equal to zero. All right, so I'll, I won't say it's equal to zero yet. <laughs> that force in the y direction is equal to. Uh, I got upward forces. The hinge force again mislabeled as FH, plus T sine of thirty degrees. Um, minus. 400 Newton minus 165 Newton. Again, not setting it equal to anything because ChatGPT didn't tell me to do anything like that. So let's see um, if <laughs> it corrects me uh, out of this mistake. Uh, actually, I need to move free body diagram. All right. Uh, oh wait, I didn't write down the sum of torques. So let's do sum of torque. Um, 
network is uh and you know uh from the and i think it will be realistic to say that i don't know how to write torque here because with the way this diagram is it really doesn't give me any idea of how the torque should be written uh, so i'll say i think i'm stuck at writing down the sum of the torques around the hinge Let me see if it'll help me pull out of this Mohs dive. Torque around the hinges together by summing torques around the hinge, we eliminate the hinge. Of course, I mean, not exactly right, but close enough, make it easier to solve for T. You simply don't have to write down hinge force, you're not eliminating it, you just, it just doesn't appear in the expression. Weight of the strut. Yeah, so um, it's a word the description is good. So not having the, you know, so the correct figure that you should have drawn so that I don't end the session with just a weird looking um, bad. Um, oops. Uh, oops. Uh, weird looking bad free body diagram. The correct free body diagram should have been this. It should have been drawn on a horizontal line so that you can correctly locate the forces. Weight of the strut is in the acting at the middle, as ChatGPT is saying. That's where it should have been written. And the weight of the sign at the end of the strut should have been written here, 165 Newton. And then tension should have gone this way. And really, the hinge force, if you are drawing it correctly, you should just draw this um, in some random direction like this. And then work out the components later. Although the way this problem is set up, you don't really need to. But So if you are following the word description from ChatGPT, I think you will still get there without this helpful diagram. So it's telling you this distance, L over 2. And it's telling you the weight of the sign acting at this distance, L. That should be enough to write down the tension force here. Say, oh, sorry, not tension, um, the torque here. So you say, um, the, this is clockwise negative. So minus 400 Newton times L over 2, and then minus the second one, 165 Newton times L, and then the tension will be the only one uh, providing the, the positive torque uh, going counterclockwise. The hinge force, again, doesn't uh, provide the torque. That's the idea behind choosing this as your center of rotation. So perpendicular distance is uh, you could do that. Um, what I would probably prefer to do is uh, break up uh, tension force into two components, one that's a vertical, uh, perpendicular to the displacement and one that's parallel. And this would be, uh, this being angle 30 degrees, this would be T sine theta. So um, the fact that you are using sine doesn't change. Uh, it's a matter of what do you associate it with. Do you associate that with the length, like when you take the lever arm, or do you associate it with the force, like if you're taking force components like this? Either is fine. Um, so that, uh, uh, oh yeah, that's L over two. Torque due to tension is that. It's counterclockwise and positive. So say plus T times L over two. Uh, You know, it told me this, and that's how I wrote my equation, and then it's uh, doing that. So let's imagine that I'm confused, and say, uh, aren't the signs in your second to last equation reverse of what you were saying they were? And you should tell me that it doesn't matter.
But uh, this is again the benefit of ChatGPT as a virtual tutor. It can actually respond to you. You know, it's not like an answer key where you read it and it confuses you and you got no one to ask. It's not that. Um, you can, if something looks weird and confusing, you can ask and it'll explain. Um, I mean, I mean, it's not an error per se. The final answer doesn't change. So it's an error in the sense that it's, um, inconsistent with what they were saying but it's consistent enough that it'll give you the same answer so anyways but if it's saying that all right then this is correct all right well, i've written corrected things so far cancel out l good um and oh yeah you can just it's a 200 plus one six so 365 times two so it should be t is equal to seven three newton is that right? Let me try putting it in. Oh, I need a hinge force. Um, uh, finding the forces at the hinge, if you'd like. And let me know if you need the guidance of part. Uh, so let's uh, say, imagine that I'm um, kind of being in a hurry and say, uh, the so I say a uh, force uh, at the hinge is equal to the tension force seven thirty newton, right? It's not, no, uh, but um, it will now probably explain the correct way to get to. You do use a version of it, so the um, the horizontal component of the tension force will give you a horizontal component of hinge force here. Once you you know set this thing equal to what it should be zero set this thing equal to what it should be zero then um yeah it'll, it'll explain that um so it, it, as you're working through you know it, it, in questions where you were completely stuck and didn't do much yourself you should uh, make sure to read through this carefully and slowly and if any part is uh, doesn't make sense make sure you know ask a follow-up question and uh, don't move on until you feel like you understood it. I mean, you know, don't waste too, too much time on it, but spend enough time. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's correct. Vertical component, uh, tangent force. Yeah, you got to make sure you have that. And uh, um, so, you know, you might... Uh, um, so I'll, to this question, I'll say, yes, please. Um, Mainly because I'm feeling lazy. <laughs> but I, I am saying you should. Um, I, I don't know if uh, plugging the numbers itself is what um, uh, helps you understand the material. Um, but you should make sure that you read through this and make sure that this makes a sense to you. The actual algebra steps and reasoning through um, through how the hinge force is related to the other forces. See, is it done calculating or in my there or out? Uh, let me do it this way. Let me close that. Oh, wait, is it done calculating? You know, I don't know if that's right. Um, <laughs> I mean, given these two, that could be right. Well, let me just plug it in and see if it's uh, right. 66 to me. I don't, shouldn't need a decimal. Um, Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, as I keep saying, you know, it's a pretty good virtual tutor because it's uh, uh, able to do most of the questions well. Uh, and uh, the kind of the questions that you will see ChatGPT struggling on will be um, things that require geometric reasoning. Um, and, you know, here it didn't quite recognize that the free body diagram I drew was not helpful. Um, but it knows how to do a lot of the problems. So when you read its word description, it is giving correct steps when you tell it, I'm stuck, I don't know how to do the thing that my previous steps uh, give no reason to think that I should have able to. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I think that's enough. Um, so uh, thank you to those of you joining uh, this uh, virtual class session by recording the video. I will uh, see you in lab.